What's up guys? So this is not going to be my regularly scheduled program that will resume tomorrow. I have a review of the Audio Engine D1 coming out uh, tomorrow, which is Tuesday, which is, uh, oh, what's the date of that? <laughs> the 22nd. Now, before we get into some of my records here, I do want to take this chance to whore out my second channel, which I do have a second channel. If you're new to the channel, I haven't really talked about it in a while. Um, but yeah, I've got one. It's awesome. So the channel is called What Makes. I changed it from Joshua Valor MK2 um, because I basically am doing like short form video essays for pop culture stuff, uh, movies, stuff like that. The two movies that I've done so far is What Makes Marvel Movies Great and What Makes Star Wars Suck. And to get the reasons for both of those, you'll have to go check out the channel link to that is down below. So go see it. Okay, so I've got a few records here that I just pulled from, from my big collection because I didn't feel like bringing the camera all the way out there. And I want to talk about these because I find vinyl so fascinating in the fact that I'm personally not somebody who thinks that it sounds better than digital. I think digital is my preferred format. Um, but I, I just love the idea of owning vinyls, of, of plugging it in, of listening to an entire album. And it, that's tapping. I'll get to that in a second. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, everyone's got a story. Most people who are, are really into it have a story about how they got into it. And I love learning those stories. So if you have a story for this, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear it. Um, my story is basically, uh, this is a bonding experience for me and my stepfather. And uh, it was much needed because we didn't really get along for a lot of years. Um, and this is kind of a, something that, that he didn't really find that big of a deal, but, but I did. So I wanna talk about these records for a few reasons. One is a few of these records, uh, not necessarily, I think there's only one here that that has it but there's a, a few records out there that are um they, they have like five cent um prices for them this particular one by the rolling stones has a two dollar and 75 cent sticker right there and it's just <laughs> i wish albums were that that cheap now i think uh the last time i bought an album it was like a dell's 25 and i want to say it was like 30 bucks. It's just ridiculously expensive. Um, but I have a few here that I, I kind of want to talk about because I find either the album artwork cool or uh, the record itself is really good. So let's talk about this first one, the Rolling Stones, right? So the front looks like this, the back looks like that. And what I like about this is that, that it's a unique um, record in terms of like the actual fitting for it because it has like the zipper on it. And the zipper actually works. And then when you open the zipper, it's like some dude's hairy stomach, which <laughs> like, it's just, it's just such a weird thing that like it's some dude in his underwear and a hairy stomach underneath this record. And um, then on the back, it's like, uh, but I'm trying to find when it was printed. Uh, maybe I can pull the paper out here and see if I can find when it was printed. Now it doesn't say, but it was probably around the 70s or 80s because that's when my stepfather bought most of his, his uh, records and this is one of the ones that he bought. Another one here that I love the sound of, I think it's really cool, It's as well as really neat artwork, is um, this Alhambra album. And, uh, and I just, I love the way this artwork looks. It reminds me of the movie Drive in terms of like the neon colors. Um, this one's pretty old. So this is back in the days when they were advertising uh, ultra high fidelity. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, this whole this whole thing says like high fidelity right here, which is, is kind of cool. And uh, it's a very, very good album. I know you're not supposed to handle this, but this one actually is scratched up a little bit. So I keep this more for sentimental value than anything, um, especially than critical listening. So I'm not really too caring about uh, oils or dirt on this one anymore. But it's such, I, th I find them so fascinating um, in terms of like the tangibility of everything, in terms of like the coloration, um, how they chose to display things. I mean, th these were so old that they were still advertising things as stereo. And this Nat King Cole is a perfect example. So like, this was a stereo recording, which if you don't know, they started advertising stereo. And stereo is, is the separation between left and right channels. And uh, stereo 
was not always on LPs. It, it wasn't always there. So when they came out with it, it was like the the next big thing. And luckily this one stuck. It was kind of like 3D for TVs or flat screens for TVs. Um, flat screens being a better analogy because flat screens actually stuck around. This is a, a set of three records. So in here you have, um, let's see if I can do this correctly, but you have basically like three different records that are a collection of his, that are a collection of his greatest works. And I find that really, really interesting. And I just feel like these sorts of things, they're dying. They're slowly going away. They're slowly disintegrating from the world. The world is slowly passing them by. And, you know, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not. That's a discussion for an entirely other time. But it's interesting. And I, I like the nostalgia of it. And, uh... And I feel like there's a connect, and I feel like sometimes, like with this Elton John album, there's a connection with the audience and from the audience to the artist that isn't possible by today. I mean, you you have all these videos, these uh, interviews, but I feel like I'm more connected with Elton John because in this particular album, I get to not only see the lyrics, but it, it kind of gives me a sense of of who the artist is in terms of their artwork. And not in this particular one, but in some, you get to read a little bit about the artist, a little bit about why they did what they did and how they did their album. And I feel like this is this is missing in today's world. I feel like there was old school artists and then there's new school artists. And the old school artists, you know, they, they have a way of doing things that the artists of today don't have. It's different. This Elton John album was made in Germany um, it's a high fidelity stereo record because that's so crazy. This one I actually do care to handle properly. There's a little bit of dust on it, but, um, and you know, El Elton John is such a storyteller anyways, but you know, he's, he's kind of the last of the Mohicans type of guy for, for music nowadays. Like he's still maintained relevant. Actually, one of my favorite albums of his is his greatest work live. Um, and I'll leave a, a Google playlist link if I remember to do it down in the description below. And it's basically uh, him performing, I think it was in 2004, 2005. He is, is doing his greatest work live. And that album is just so well mastered, especially for a live album. I mean, you get enough of the crowd, you get enough of the liveness, but it, it just has such a, a cool... Um, overall sound to it it just sounds really really good um and then the, the last thing i want to talk about is this album now this is a, a stereo again um printed in the usa so this one is whatever that word is i can't pronounce that i'm so sorry um symphony number no. seven and e flat major and what i like about this is i'm not i love classical but i'm not i don't really know a lot about it but I love this because for me, this is like an oddball album. This is something that was in the collection. Russ, my stepfather, didn't have an answer for it. I asked him about it, like, what the hell is this? And he was like, I, I don't know. I don't know when I got that. I don't know where I bought it from. I don't know if I even bought it. And it, it's it's interesting because, like, there's a, there's a mystery to this. Like, if I want to know what is on this, I have to sit down and I have to listen to it. And that's awesome. And so I might set it back there. And I might listen to it, you know, for, you know, however long this one runs, maybe 45 minutes, however long. And that's awesome. You get to learn something unknown faster than just a click of a button. You actually get to take time to learn something. It's like going on like an old school date. You know, now you have Tinder, you have all these dating apps and stuff. But when you actually go sit down for like two hours with somebody and talk to them, you are going to learn so much more about them than you could possibly on an application. And I know the world is shifting towards applications. The world is shifting towards the modern, the future, the whatever that makes life easier and more efficient for everybody. Um, and whether that's sad or not, that's not for me to say. But in terms of, of, of tangibility, of learning things slowly, the old school way that that I got the, the later half. I was born in 95. You know, I, I look like I'm 35, but I'm actually 22. And, you know, the, the way that the world has changed in that amount of time, I got the very back end of 
of the old school style of doing things. And luckily my parents stayed relatively old school and I got to stay in it. And I think there's an X factor to the old school way of doing things that I can't necessarily explain, but my best theory as to why it exists and how it exists is because you used to spend more time doing things. And now you can do so much more. I mean, like think about the, the idea of this, like if this is the 1500s and I was just like a lone plantation up here in Washington and there was just miles and miles and miles before another house. And I went out and I hiked every single day for a year in different directions. I would find new things all the time. I would get to know the lay of the land. And except for the very close vicinity, I would always find something that was interesting or unique. Now it's changed. And now because of the existence of airplanes, I can go anywhere in the world within 24 hours. Now that's cool. And it's not necessarily the same, but which one is better? You know, it's, it's hard to distinguish. It's hard to quantify because they're not the same is, is knowing the detail of everything is knowing, you know, every piece of the surrounding world around you better than knowing what this little pocket of all the way over there is. Maybe, maybe not. Um, this is a really weird analogy. I'm not sure where I wanted to go with this. <laughs> Anyways, guys, sorry, I'm still waking up. It's so early for me. So I will catch you guys in the next video. Uh, stay tuned. Please check out the second channel. Um, I, it's a little rough. I'm kind of getting it up and going, but you guys know how I am with quality. I like to keep upping my quality and up in my game. And um, with what makes that is what I intend to do. So thank you very much for sticking around. I will catch you guys in the next video. Stay safe. Don't do anything your mom would approve of. Peace.